Hey guys, welcome to and welcome back to another episode of Simply Champagne. Thank you guys for following the Simply Champagne journey. And we are heading now to my favorite place in the world. I've traveled abroad in a lot of places, but there is no place I love greater than this beautiful city uh, of New Orleans, Louisiana. Love, love this place. And we are going to be going to talking about Epervescence NOLA. Epervescence NOLA is a very vibrant champagne bar and restaurant located in the heart of New Orleans. It has garnered recognition in several notable publications, including, including Trip Savvy, where it was named one of the best five wine bars in New Orleans. Wine Spectator has also featured Epervescence NOLA, listed among one of the top-notch champagne destinations in the United States. Additionally, they've been in Forbes, Eaters New Orleans, and Go NOLA have highlighted the unique offerings and lively atmosphere of this popular establishment. Epervescence New Orleans presence in the vibrant French Quarter scene is added to the cultural richness and culinary appeal of an area. And today we have the owner and founder, the beautiful Miss Crystal Hines. Hi. <laughs> Welcome in. Thank you for being a guest. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I love talking about bubbles. <laughs> no, you, you and me both. You, you and me both. So starting off, just tell me a little bit about your wine journey and how did you come up with want to establish a place such as Epervescence? Uh, my journey is a little different than most people in the hospitality industry because mine started um, as a guest more. I had never worked in the hospitality industry. I was a nurse by trade, a stay-at-home mom by choice for 20-something years. And then as my kids grew up, they challenged me to follow my passion. And I was like, well, what is my passion? I kind of lost myself when I was taking care of my family. And they go, mom, all you talk about is how someone needs to open a place in New Orleans on the French Quarter in these beautiful historic buildings that featured bubbles by the glass. Because you love bubbles. Dad likes his Manhattans. And when we go out, right. usually a restaurant has, you know, a pretty common bubble by the glass. And I don't get to taste all the interesting things that I did when I got to travel around the world. So that's kind of where it started. My kids challenged me to follow my passion. And I was like, darn, I really have to do this because <laughs> they'll never believe me when I tell them they have to follow theirs if I don't follow mine. So for me, it was a win-win. I kind of went into it just saying, I'm going to open a place where I want to hang out from the guest perspective. And of course, it's six years later, and I've learned a whole lot about the industry. <laughs> nice. Congratulations on six years. Thank that you. is that is saying saying a lot. Saying a lot. So being in New Orleans, where it's considered the spirit capital of the world, how has the city been receptive to such a niche style bar such as a bubble bar? Um, they love it. They absolutely love it. But I have to say, we do have a full bar, too, as well. So, nice. um, you know, we feature it's not just champagne. It's effervescence, bubbles and bites. So we feature bubbles around the world um, and we feature them in flights. So, you know, champagne's not always affordable for everybody. Um, every day. So we have, you know, anything from a $10 glass of, of Prosecco all the way up to like, you know, a hundred and something glass of Krug that you can sample. And then our flights are built at different price levels as well. Then we have our own house sparkling cocktails. Cause like you said, New Orleans is a cocktail city and all of our cocktails are seasonal using fresh ingredients. Right now we have a throwback called Hurricane Crystal. They surprised me with the name a few years ago. And it's a really true hurricane. It, we make our own grenadine. It's got three ounces of um, liquor and it's topped with bubbles. It's, so it's, um, it's really good. It's fantastic. It's deadly. So we also have the half size, which is um, 1.4 ounces. It's called the Tropical Storm. And we're hoping that just wards off all the bad Gree, gree, you know, <laughs> you can drink the storm and it won't come this way. <laughs> absolutely. 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 So now I want to talk about a little bit about your building that you highlighted earlier. Um, is it really a, a 1890s Victorian Center Hall cottage that was formerly a private residence? It is. It's gorgeous. I fell in love with it. I live a block away. I moved to the quarter because oh. I kind of knew I wanted to focus on this area. I love this area of the quarter because we're on the edge the edge okay. on North Rampart near Esplanade. This is where 
a lot of the homes are and the people really live. It's not so much touristy and it's really making a comeback. We're across the street from the Treme, which everyone probably remembers from the movie. So it's a very um, culturally diverse area. It's accessible. You don't get stuck in the quarter from other, other parts of the city. You can Uber here from Lakeview, from the suburbs, from uptown. And, you know, it's, it's a great spot. And I also, key to what I was doing was I really felt like we could do more to welcome everyone in our places. And some people still feel like they're not welcome in parts of the city and different restaurants and different, you know, places. And so I really wanted to make sure everybody was welcomed here. So um, I think this is a great spot for that. So, yeah, I, I definitely know how <clears throat> just wine in general can seem very pretentious and yes. uh, especially when you're dealing with champagne, it kind of does kind of scare people away. Like, oh, I don't know if I can, I can go in that place that uh, may not right. be able to afford it or, you know, it's just too uppity, too uppity for my vibe, especially in such a cool party city like um, New Orleans, which hits on to my to my next part is that. So how is Epervescent's experience once you step in? How's the experience? What? Sorry. When you when you come to the, when you come uh -huh. to Epervescent, how's the experience? What is the experience? Oh, well, that's the fun part, because my philosophy is and in my mission statement is we create a magical experience for you with Love food that. and with drink, whatever you want. Even if you don't want an alcoholic drink, we have amazing mocktails. We have little Cokes and little bottles and Diet Cokes, some very European style. We um, So we decide when you walk in, you can be a romantic couple. It could be a girl's bachelorette party. Nice. It could be a friend's birthday. You could be by yourself and you just want to, you know, sit at a table or sit at the bar and learn about bubbles and, and taste a flight. But we always welcome you with some water and then we give you a complimentary bowl of our house popcorn. I love when I'm in Europe and other places and they give you something to nibble on. It's kind of like, let's slow down. It's not five for one drinks. Right. It's let's enjoy this drink and uh, sip on it and enjoy the day. My philosophy is um, life is too short. I opened this at 57, so I know that. Um, and we should celebrate every day. Even Absolutely. if you lose yourself today, you need to take a moment, sit down, relax, sip on something you love, and just celebrate the day. So that's what we're about. <laughs> nice. nice. So would you would you like to consider yourself more like a like a neighborhood bar? Well, we're technically a restaurant. So okay. Okay. we are in the neighborhood and we do have regulars. We have a big U-shaped bar in the front and nice. the whole inside is open because I did a historic tax credit on this building. It nice. used to be the studio, the recording studio for the TV station next door. And so it was low ceilings and, um, you know, the little cubbies that, that recording studios had. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's all opened up and light and beautiful now, um, really white, with some dark accents. And um, it's it's a beautiful space, but it is a restaurant. But it's, so we're very casual, but they're very high end um, small plates. So my, my chefs are amazing. And I think it's taken a year or two for people to realize how good the food is. And I can't wait for someone to discover and write, do a write up on my chefs because they're formally trained. They're a couple, they're married, they're my entire kitchen nice. and they make every sauce. They go to the farmer's market, everything's sustainable. We fly in our truffles, we fly in caviar. It's really, really an exceptional culinary staff that we have. Yeah, that's one thing I, I will say and like doing my research is that, you know, the, the back of the house, doesn't get as much credit in the champagne bar and wine mm -hmm. Spain, champagne bar restaurant scene today as they deserve. They they deserve a lot, lot more credit than we're, what we're seeing and uh, getting, especially public, through publications or whatnot. So I agree with you totally yeah. in regards and to And they're a big scene. part of what we do. The experience that we create for you at Effervescent, it's a combination of food and drink. Even if you don't order food, if you taste this popcorn, right. I mean, people are begging me to make this spice and sell it. I'm going to have to look into it. But um, it's addictive. It's so good. And it's it's good for you. It's olive, really good olive oil, air pop popcorn, Spanish paprika, nutritional yeast, some chives from our garden. So it's um, it's vegan. It's gluten free. It's, you know, it's a great little snack. We sell it to go now even. But nice. everything they come up with pairs so perfectly with bubbles. They're huge bubble lovers as well. So um, we're a good team. They've been with me from the beginning. So um, their experience has helped me since I didn't have as much experience in the restaurant world and the wine world. I'm a firm believer that team, hey, teamwork makes the dream work tremendously, yeah. tremendously. So get into your champagne, your sparkling wine selection. How did you come up and curate your selection and 
what goes well, into in the beginning on? i had help uh, my first manager and my sommelier and i would taste we'd taste at my house a block away before we opened to try to plan what we wanted to build our flights and to build you know we're starting from scratch but to build our whole wine program and in the beginning i had seven flights which seems crazy now the amount of bottles that were open but um we've pared it down since COVID. we do four flights and that works really well right now for us. And there's something for everyone. There's usually two full champagne flights. Um, and then we have two sparkling wine flights and they're different themes. Like one now is sipping. I think it's sipping through the sunset or sipping to the sunset. We have a um, Prosecco flight, which is really fun. A lot of people don't realize the differences in Prosecco. Absolutely. Then we have a grower champagne flight, grow me something beautiful. And then we have the big houses, go big or go home. So a focus on the big houses, but it does change seasonally. And um, since COVID, it's been great because we use the QR code. So now I can feature some really unique growers that maybe I, I can only get six bottles of. I can run that through, let people taste those unique bottles and then move to something else in the same weekend without having to reprint the whole menu and do all right. of that. So it's actually been an advantage since COVID for me, because I think it's fun to taste these unique bottles that a lot of people will never get their hands on, you know. Yes, Farmer Fizz is where it's at. I'm a huge grower <laughs> champagne, grower champagne person. I love I love the big houses too, but I'm a huge lover of the um, the smaller producers. Love their stories. Love the the family. Right. Folks. I like to call them like the soul food of champagne. You know, yeah, that's nice great. Story. I've never heard that, but I love it. It I mean, definitely they're so passionate about what they do. I mean, every absolutely. every step they're involved in, it's amazing. Nice, nice, nice. So. What is your favorite champagne cocktail and food item on your menu? Hmm. Well, since we change food items a lot, that's hard. But I do love our caviar. And sometimes okay. I spoil myself and I say I work so hard tonight. I am just going to have a glass of champagne and eat caviar for dinner. And I sit at the bar and I'm like, this is surreal. I look around and I go, I can't even believe that this actually you know, is, is what I created because it's kind of what I thought of in my mind. And we have three types of caviar. We have a local caviar, local bofin caviar called um, Cajun caviar. And then um, we have the Kaluga and then okay. Fusion. And then we have the Ocetra. So we serve ours on potato chips. They're house made. Nice. Pepper mash and the plain. And then we have the whole service with the little plate with the um, spoon and it's got the cream fresh with some flowers from our garden, some chives. And, you know, you build, you build your little chip with the caviar and it's fantastic because everybody knows potato chips are one of the best mm. things and popcorn that yes. go with um, bubbles. So we wanted to incorporate that and not, like you said, not make it too high end. We want it super approachable and fun that you'd stop in every day and, you know, and feel comfortable in shorts and whatever, dressed up, you, any, however you are, you're welcome. You know, nice. we want the food to feel that way too. Love that, love that, love that. This is one thing I always ask my guests when they come on the show, because I'm a big person of, uh, I know that champagne has been around for a long, long time. Do you happen to have a unicorn champagne? Have you tried it or have you, are you on this search for this one bottle that you want to try? Well, the, the real unicorn, I would love to try something like super old because I'm kind of new to the wine world and I haven't tried old stuff. So like in a dream, I have this fascination with the Titanic. I would love to try one of those bottles of the Charles E. Zeke that yes. they, they recovered um, from that ship. I think it would be so awesome. But um, there's also another one that I had when I opened. It was called Sylvie. And it okay. was just so beautiful. I've never been able to get it again. I, I, I don't think they import it to here again. I would love to find that. Um, it was just this beautiful, it was called Sylvie Explosion. Oh, nice. Really, really beautiful champagne that I've never been able to get again. But um, I'm never at a loss for good bubbles. We have a lot to choose from. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, mine's is actually, I have, I have a few, but I'll probably say um, the 1921 Dom. Oh, first. The first Dom that, um, that was released, I would love to try that. Also, I am a fan of the Shipwreck shipwreck Champagne as well. I would love to get a, uh, me too. Any get my hands day. on that. Yeah. Definitely. We did yeah. Uh, every year. We have like a New Year's Eve dinner. It's a uh, ticketed. It's a, We go all out and we have a band and it's themed. And two years ago, we did the dinner from the, the Titanic. So, oh, nice. like, you know, I always try to pair the Midnight Toast with the same wine and 
Um, it's super fun. It's like a, our biggest night of the year. And we, we recreated the grand staircase and everybody dressed up. We didn't do the sinking part. We just did the good part. We had some of the original menus and, you know, it was so fun. So I also love planning events like that and, um, you know, recreating things and doing bubble classes for people. And from a, from a point of a guest, really, from someone who came into this just liking bubbles. And I did pass my sommelier level one, but just to give me, you know, enough credentials to be able to um, speak to people. But honestly, I started with um, Champagne for Dummies, the book from the internet. That's what I recommend for everybody. And every server that works for me gets a copy when they start because it's just super basic. And if you want to learn more, that's the best place to just start really simply because it's really not that confusing. And then you just taste and see what you like and you know that honestly is crazy that you said it's actually the first champagne book i bought as well and it is <laughs> it's very it's very great. good it's, it's, it's still great. a good resource to this day even though you know I've, I've been i've been in the industry for eight years now and you know certified some and all that i still reference back to that book because the basics are very important all the intangible yes. things you'll learn along the way but um sometimes you just got to get back to the basics and that is definitely a book that will keep keep you keep you on your toes for sure yes. keep you on your toes for sure so one thing you was talking about earlier was covid how yes. did covid affect your business and how are you guys able to maintain for such a troubling yeah. time um well we i kind of saw it coming like being i had a nursing background i knew it was pretty serious and we had our third birthday party like that saturday in march we opened on march 17th and our city shut down on Monday, but I kind of knew, I, I was like, I have to get through this birthday party. I just have to celebrate three years. And it was a small celebration because people were nice. hearing words of it. We did it outside. We had a band. And then the next day, that Sunday, when I had to order food for the next week, I called my staff before we even closed. And I closed at three o'clock that day. And I told them, and I mean, I literally broke down crying because I knew it would be a long time. Right. And my, my manager at the time had to finish. I was just like, we're going to have, we're going to have to shut down. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. And um, luckily, all of my people were able to get on unemployment, except for my manager, who was from France. And he helped me. Um, he helped deliver champagne and wine all during COVID. We would do specials. We drive around the city and we'd get packets of to go um, caviar service. So right. they could do their virtual happy hours with bubbles from effervescence and caviar. And I thought it was really important to keep a presence in the city and to just be there. And people to this day still tell me, you delivered caviar. You walked to my house in the quarter and delivered us bubbles. You know, you, your manager came and they remember that it was a connection that they, they really appreciated, you know, so I'm glad we did that. And then we slowly opened as soon as we could. At first, my manager and I um, just opened for four hours and we made cocktail bubble cocktails and poured like one flight um, in the beginning because I didn't want my staff to come back because I knew they wouldn't make enough to live on. So they stayed on unemployment until we could open because it was it was slow, you know, coming back at the vaccinations and all of that. You know, people slowly came back, but it, it took a while and it was not many people at one time. So um, we're grateful to have survived. And yeah, we're excited to still be around. <laughs> awesome. Do you think you think you guys are fully recouped to pre how things were pre COVID? Do you think it's still a process? In the, I think in it's the still a process. We are um, we were open five days a week. We just recently opened this spring, our fourth day. Um, so we're open Thursday through Sunday. Sunday, we do a brunch 11 to 5. We do a um, caviar bagel brunch along with all of our bites, which is very popular. People love that. It's super fun to linger over these fresh baked everything bagels and pick your caviar and all the accoutrements. But um, yeah, so we still we're going to try to open on Monday at some time coming up, but it's still not 100 percent. And of course, the staffing is, is is a big issue here in New Orleans. Sorry. So we just have one staff. We have about eight people for a hundred seat restaurant, counting kitchen and me wow. with that. I'm, I'm managing as well right now. So I have learned a lot. I even have learned how to carry a tray with champagne glasses. Nice. Nice. That <laughs> I've always opened bottles and, and poured, but um, yeah, I've learned a lot. It's been good for me personally, for my business to know my business, every aspect of it. But um, I can't wait till we can get back to being open more. Nice. Nice. Do you guys, what are some of the cool events and specials that you guys offer for guests once they come? Well, of course, we talked about the flights. That's super cool. We have a big table in the back. It seats 12. It's called, we call it the champagne sharing table. There's nice. no fee for it. We do ask you to try to reserve it to make sure you can get it. And I can um, plan a tasting for you or sparkling 101 class with 
bites that goes with it. And that is usually a Prosecco, a Cava Rosé and a Champagne. And I just kind of in a light fashion, not a super, you know, um, stuffy class, but like if it's bachelorettes, we'll open start with the Prosecco and I'll explain my story of how I came to love bubbles. And then I'll tell them how Prosecco is made and what grape it is. And then they'll drink it and then we'll have some sharing bites. And then when the Cava comes, I'll open that and tell them how it's different than Prosecco. And um, then we do the same thing with the champagne and they love it. A lot of the bachelorettes say it's one of the best things they've done in New Orleans or just friends do the same thing. We get a group of friends together. And so they get to have fun and talk. They don't have to sit the whole time and listen, but they get an, an overview of bubbles in general and they get to taste some different things and learn a little bit while having fun. I even go into what, why the, you know, the glass choice that I chose for effervescence and why I don't use the flute for champagne and, and really good bubbles. I show them how to open a bottle, which people just love. And I also go around when I pour the glasses and when someone tastes it, I tell them why they're tasting. Because most people are like, oh, yeah, it's good. And I'm like, you're not actually tasting to see if it's good. You're tasting to see if it's corked. <laughs> and they're like, right. what is that? <laughs> right, right. Right. So it's just kind of a fun little overview for, you know, people just to get an idea and, and they like it because it's more of an experience. And then they can go in the quarter and dance on tables later in the night. <laughs> Somewhere else. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you, you're, you're just like me. I, I'm very anti flute. <clears throat> I do prefer um, to prefer more. If I do, I like more bowl shape. I don't like the standard standard flute. And I, I definitely don't like coops at all. Mm -hmm. uh, unless it's going for a cocktail. Uh, a sparkling wine cocktail. I would. I highly recommend guests to stay away from coops because the bubbles just dissipate yes. so quickly, very, yes. very, very, very quickly. I always tell them flutes are just fun for a toast or for right. prosecco because prosecco doesn't have as much going on in the flavor, the aromas, and everything. But for anything other than that, we we use a um, a tulip, a rosé. We the real. But we don't use the champagne glass because I like the stem, the longer mm -hmm. stem on the actual rosé glass. But I tell people if you're registering for like a wedding thing or, or have a new apartment and you're buying one glass, just buy a really big wine glass, like a white wine glass. And you can use right. it for red, white bubbles. If you're just starting off and you just want a nice glass, I'd go with that. And it's good for everything. Nice. Nice. Well, practical nice. notes from a stay at home mom. <laughs> can you share with me any like uh, memorable customer experiences or success stories that, um, that stick with you um, and you have stuck with you in the six years you've been open? Yeah. Um, there's one that's really funny. It's like that. Well, for me, it was actually a friend of mine's daughter. It was, we were super busy one night and my husband and I are sitting at the bar and she was on a blind date. I didn't know it, but she was, her and her girlfriend were on a date with two fighter pilots that were in town. Oh wow! And, yeah. And so they were at the other side of the bar and, um, they hit it off immediately and they got married last year and that was her first date at effervescence nice um, and it was so cute i could see they were hitting it off and you know went and spoke to them and they did their first look picture which is beautiful for the wedding at effervescence i opened up for them and he wore his uniform and she came in with the dress and it was beautiful they burst out crying i mean the pictures are i think they're on my website they sat in the exact same seat where they sat when they first met and um, they had just a beautiful moment at the bar before the wedding, so or the restaurant. It, that that was like super special to me. So Absolutely. and it just all happened organically. You know, we've had quite a few proposals. We've had weddings there, small weddings. We do one or two a year. We don't do too many because we hate to close to our public. But um, and they're they're always for people who love what we do because we definitely do it the effervescent style. You know, there nice. has to be bubbles involved. <laughs> but um, yeah, that that was really fun. So. That is, that is, that's remarkable. And I think like moments like that is when you sit back as an owner, you kind of like, this is why I do what I, this is why I did what I did to open this type of place for moments, moments like that. Cause they will never forget that moment and never forget that place. Um, Cause it's such an integral part of their, their story together. So that is, that's beautiful. That's I do have one other story I have to tell you. Cause it's yeah. so cute. it was in the first year and the, where we're located North Rampart is, it was kind of raunchy for a while. But in the old days, it was a nice area. Now it's coming back. And it was Mother's Day is a big day. And we had the cutest little black lady come in. And her granddaughter took her for Mother's Day brunch. And she called me over. And she had the hat and everything. She was all dressed up. And she said, I just have to tell you that my dead husband 
Paul would just roll over in his grave if he knew I was sitting in a white woman's champagne bar on <laughs> Rampart Street drinking bubbles. And she said, it has been the best day ever. <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> that's exactly why I opened. You know, nice. it's like, and we've had um, several gay weddings, including my son to my architect, which they did not nice. meet me later. Congrats. We've had lesbian weddings. We've had straight weddings. So we really are just, it makes me so happy that everyone feels comfortable in my place. And when you come in, it often feels like my home. When you leave, I'll walk out the door and open the door for you. And it, I just really feel like I'm welcoming people into my space and trying to show them a good time. Life is it's, so rough for some people, you know, for it, everybody, really, you know, to have a few minutes like to relax and feel comfortable is the greatest gift I can give. So I'm nice. thrilled to do that. It definitely seems like you guys really embody the spirit of New Orleans in, in, in totality uh, with everybody that's being, you know, so receptive to it and um, loving, loving the establishment. Have you had any celebrity guests, any celebrity guests, any famous guests coming to your establishment? You we have, um, I, and it's weird because I never recognize them. I like treat everyone the same. So it's like, <laughs> to me, everybody's a celebrity, but I know we had Solange lived down the street from me for a while and she nice. sat in the courtyard. Well, um, and sometimes the, her security would come in first and, you know, would make sure she usually sat in the back in the corner in the courtyard so they could just have a good time and nobody knew that they were there. Sean um, Payton from the Saints would come in. He actually prefers tequila over bubbles, but I'm a high end tequila. Um, I, we've had a few other people. I can't even remember. I'm not so much about the, you know, the stars, some basketball players, football players. My husband's always knows I always nine one one in because we live a block away and say, I think there's some tall people in here. You need to come tell me who they are. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you never know who you're going to be sitting next to. <laughs> nice, nice. That is awesome. So, last question that we will let you go because I know you are such a you are a very busy, busy person. Five years from now, where would you like to see Effervescence at? Now, that's the hard question. Well, I definitely would like to see us open for more hours and more days. Um, I'd like to see my staff grow bigger, which we're working on right now. Um, I'd like to get our our um, sparkling 101 in our wine tasting classes back, our pure classes, which we're going to be working on this year. Um, and there may even be a, a possibility of opening one somewhere else. People have asked, but I've kind of been waiting till we get this one fully opened again and, you know, staffed before we do that. So yeah, continue to grow, continue for my wine uh, cellar to get bigger and get all kinds of um, new bubbles. So yeah. Nice, nice. So where can people find you and where can people follow the business? Um, at Effervescence NOLA on Instagram. And we have a very visible Instagram. It's great. We do it in-house. And then our website, you can go to nolabubbles.com or just Effervescence. It should pull up. And we do have menus on there. And it is seasonal. So it's, you know, the menu is pretty correct, but we can run out. Like soft shell crabs, we ran out Sunday on because they're so hard to get this year with the weather. Yes. Um, we had that was a big hit. And this weekend's our annual chicken picnic. We're almost sold out. We do fried chicken with a Veuve Clicquot flight. And we do that every summer because everybody Amazing. knows fried chicken and bubbles are great. Yes. Um, so that's going to be super fun. You get your whole picnic at your table, your watermelon salad, potato salad, green beans, everything made, even a little peanut butter cookie. And um, you can add on caviar and all this fun stuff. So. Um, yeah, we'll continue to do fun things together. I hope we'll do another. I had the opportunity before um, my manager had to move after COVID um, that we did a grower, a special club champagne dinner. Mm. We, we worked really hard for like three years to get enough special clubs to do a paired dinner. I'd love to do another one of those. It was a huge success and just so amazing. And if you've not had any of the special clubs champagnes, I'm sure you have. Yes. Um, there's not a bad one in the bunch. So. At all. But they are hard to get enough of, in, yes. especially in New Orleans, to do a pairing. But we're working on it. So some fun things coming up. Um, yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, again, thank you so much, Ms. Hines. And it was a pleasure. And if you guys are ever in New Orleans, you know your place to go to for the best bubbles and bites in the French Quarter. So, again, thank you. And we will talk to you guys again soon. Cheers. Cheers to you, too. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.